As a SharePoint developer, are you ready for this new wave of tech that is it's actually a tidal wave? Are you prepared? Are you ready? Do you have a plan to move forward? That's what I want to talk about in this video today. So one of the videos that I do probably every 18 months or so, maybe three years, <clears throat> is talk about the changes or the evolutions that I'm seeing in tech, especially coming as a SharePoint developer. And this is passionate for me because I experienced being on the wrong side of technology before, and I vowed to myself and I vowed to my family that I would never make that mistake ever again. So I'm always keeping a pulse on disruptors are things that I see coming down the pike that will be a game changer for IT professionals, more specifically SharePoint developers, right? What we used to call ourselves SharePoint developers. And what I'm seeing now with AI, uh, low code, no code, the power platform, uh, the migration to the cloud from recent to, to past, right? Those are the, what I would consider very key pivot points in the industry. And actually these pivot points are coming faster than what I've seen before, right? Um, with artificial intelligence, especially in the, the SharePoint space or the Microsoft space is an extreme game changer. I think for industries and in IT in general, it's going to be a disruptor. And the biggest question is, as an IT pro, especially someone who kind of hinged or started their career or got comfortable in their career, again, around SharePoint development, what exactly does that mean? So let me point to the whiteboard. Let's, let's kind of talk through um, what happened and why it happened. So if you look at this, from my 20 years of experience with consulting and working in IT, these are some of the, the key patterns that I'm seeing when I bounce from client to client or from organization to organization. I tried to draw a straight line there. So what you had here with on-prem, you had SharePoint, right? And I got started in 07. And of course, this is morphed into higher versions since then. And what you've seen over time is that organizations will upgrade their on-prem from 07 to 2010 to 2016 to 2019, so on and so forth. I'm trying to squeeze them all in here. Right? And what 2019, and I can say this for with a certain level of confidence, 2019 is not a Microsoft Evergreen roadmap. 2019, SharePoint on-prem 2019 is an appeasement for those customers for whatever reason, believe they can't move from SharePoint on-prem to the cloud. And what they're trying to do, what Microsoft's trying to do is appease them that says, okay, yeah, here's some cloud technology, here's some cloud features that you can only get if you're in the cloud. But to make you feel like you're not being left behind, we're going to deploy these this modern look, this modern SharePoint, these modern out of the box web parts, so on and so forth. So for them, it's a huge headache, a huge headache. And I can only imagine the day that they send up the flag that says we're no longer supporting or we're no longer going to upgrade SharePoint on prem. Moving forward, we would just do these feature patches to kind of make sure that, you know, security, your sound, and if there's, you know, any major pivots that we have to do or any major findings that we have to find, we would adjust those accordingly. I think that day is coming. It may be sooner than later, but that day is coming. So I say all that to say, if you're hinging or if your day-to-day -day is dealing with any one of these versions of SharePoint on-prem, that's a yellow flag. I would say it's probably orange. It's not red, but it's definitely an orange flag. It's more severe than what you think, especially with the new wave of tech 
that's happening. Now, from my experience, this is what I've seen. Organizations who said they can't not move to the cloud. And when I say to the cloud, that's the Microsoft 365 cloud, SharePoint Online. And when you move to SharePoint Online, again, Microsoft did, he, they are appeasing their customers because they have SharePoint Online Classic and you got SharePoint Online Modern. From a technical strategic perspective, I mean, unless you, you plan to retire in the next 24 months. But if you're not planning to retire in the next 24 months and you got years ahead of you that you need to be gainfully employed, you need to be value, you need to always have that value add, you need to have that edge, and you're with the SharePoint or the Microsoft technology stack, like that's your thing, you want to learn SharePoint Online Modern. There's a, a other tech that you need to learn, but you want to make sure from a SharePoint perspective, you're up to speed with what's happening with modern SharePoint in the cloud, okay? Now, from my from my experience, when it comes to organizations saying that they cannot move to the cloud, usually one or two events happen that change that we can't, there's no way we would never into, we need to explore it to see how, how we're gonna do it, right? There's usually two main events one or two of these events that occur that flips the entire table on itself and those who said it couldn't be done that they've been blowing this horn or signing the alarm we can't do it it's not secure we don't want to share client information out there we don't want microsoft stealing our data we don't we don't we don't you know they come up with all these barriers and why right and part of it's just they don't know what they don't know Right. It's the fear of the unknown. Like they have to get skilled up. They have to bring in experts in to say this is secure. All your data is encrypted. Microsoft. I mean, they have waivers, disclaimers, legal documents stating that their engineers cannot see your data. You're not identified by. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the to the to the the counters on that. But one or two things happen. One. The competition around you is moving faster and SharePoint on prem and all the processes built on top of it clearly becomes the bottleneck to why your operations, your internal processes cannot move as fast as you need or or it's very expensive to start jumping from. In this, I mean, these jumps like the 07, like anytime they brought us in to do these on prem to on prem migrations, at least minimum quarter million dollars, minimum that project, minimum quarter million, right? And they could go all the way up to two, three, four, five million, depending on the size of the org. And unfortunately, depends on how custom the SharePoint solution is, right? The more custom, the more expensive it gets. And you had to customize it because in order to get the most out of this investment, there's certain things you had to customize in order for the business to run. So we're not saying that customization is wrong. It's just expensive. It's one of those necessary evils. It's expensive. So when finance, like when you're trying to cut costs and finance or the controller or someone around budget sees that dollar amount it, that the current version of SharePoint you have is in the life the next version is hot and ready to go. And then the fanfare comes, right? And it's not just SharePoint that's in the life. It could be the OS that you sit on top of. So once Microsoft forces you out because you, you, you kind of fade, you're fading out of that version of the OS or SharePoint, the budget does, okay, let's assess how much it's going to cost to upgrade this. And then the number hits. Then people start questioning, why does it cost three hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars to upgrade this system is there a different way what other products do you have then you start looking at third parties and stuff like that and then someone who's been preaching cloud 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 raises their hand and says there's a cheaper way to do it um not almost say cheaper but this could be the last upgrade if you take this path and that's usually that's migrate so usually it's a cost thing it's usually the market is forcing executives and other people to say you know how come we can't get this done faster what else can we look at why do we 
you know, or you get burnt with version control because it wasn't backed up because of the disk space requirement, da, 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 da. Like there's a bunch of pain points that go with dealing with this archaic system. And Microsoft saw this long time ago in Pivot in May of 2016. And that's when they introduced, or that's when they got serious with SharePoint Online and the modern SharePoint. So that what happened. This other one, what happened is there's a new CTO. Someone in the C-suite comes in with this vision and they see on-prem and they assess the cost. There's someone that comes in with a different perspective, a fresh lens on your scenario. And all those things that you said, you, all those reasons why you said you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't, they came from organizations that did, right? They came from other organizations within your industries that had the same regulatory requirements, the same um, uh, concerns with client data in the cloud, trade secrets in the cloud, you know, all this other stuff in the cloud. And they overcame them. They had legal, they had cybersecurity, they had everyone who was concerned vet the scenario, vet the situation, and came back with a green flag that says, yeah, we're good to go because we're going to do X, Y, Z. Or in order to do this, we need to enable certain data compliance restrictions or certain security restrictions or certain um, ethic, ethic wall restrictions, so on and so forth. And Microsoft, and they teamed up because they had the budget, and they brought in the experts, the creators of the product, to the table. And Microsoft, yes, we solved this problem. With, and here's a case study with this client, billion a year, hundreds of thousands of employees, worldwide, data residency requirements, you know, regulatory requirements, all these different country requirements. And we solved for that. We have a solution for that. We have a licensing path for that. So it takes someone of that caliber, unfortunately, to come in and say what the worker bees or the engineers who've already either been trained and certified or came in from organizations that said this is possible because other clients, other customers in your industry, in your exact same scenario, made it possible. And they have been doing it and got audited it and it passed and got security audited and it passed and got cybersecurity, so on and so forth. And we're passing. Right. So a lot of this, this restriction, and I'm you know, bringing it all the way back down to you personally, your pigeonhole in this on prem scenario. And that's a very risky scenario to be in. Right. So in, in, in your options are clear. Right. It's either. They're going to leave or I'm sorry, they're going to leave. You're going to leave. Right. You're going to find another opportunity to where you can embrace um, the new wave of technology that's coming. So you're not left behind or you saw someone come in. You saw a new member of the C-suite with the vision to kind of drive this. And I've been in scenarios where the CTO came in with this vision, but didn't have enough juice to push it forward. A COO came in with the vision, had the juice to push it forward and knock down all the other barriers. And that's the thing. It becomes a very political situation um, for certain companies to overcome. OK, so let's just say you decide to leave or an executive comes in with this vision with enough juice to make this happen. And you start to migrate over or you start to learn what this new world entails this is the biggest thing that you have to understand. Now, if you go to SharePoint, if you go from on-prem SharePoint to SharePoint Online Classic, it's not ideal, but we understand, right? And there's a lot of different scenarios that you have to consider to make that happen. And sometimes that's your first step in the, the long-term game or the ultimate goal is again to modern SharePoint. But if you have to go Classic, it's just because you need to make this migration happen. Usually it's a speed thing because you can go faster with SharePoint Online on-prem to SharePoint Online Classic. But the cost is you're going to have to do a second migration sometime in the future from SharePoint Online Classic to modern SharePoint, right? Uh, or you bite that bullet now, spend the time needed 
to go from SharePoint on-prem to modern SharePoint, which is your end goal. Now, when you go out there, there's an, let's look at a new board. There's two things that you have to consider. There's two things you must consider. With your on-prem SharePoint, I'm going to just draw this as a database. This has um, a lot of business activities, meaning you use it for your intranet, which is the natural thing to do. But you use it to manage projects. So you use it You use it for your business applications, right? You have custom business apps that you built either with InfoPath or some type of form maker with a workflow, SharePoint designer workflow, or some type of third-party workflow. You use it for internal collaboration. And what does that mean? That means that these are inner department sites. So imagine if you have HR, you're going to have a library or a subsite dedicated to HR to only the folks in HR will have access to. On the flip side, you're going to have an intranet that has an HR section and all of that information is exposed to the general uh, employees or associates with the organization. So you have internal collaboration uh, for there. You also use it for some form of document management, right? So you got document management, and this could be uh, document management or DMS in this truest sense to where you need versioning, you need um, um, records management, you need uh, certain documents to review on a periodic basis. And, you know, it's a must. It's almost like an ISO. It's a must that these documents be reviewed and there's some type of audit trail to show the revision of the documents, so on and so forth, as well as version controls and stuff like that. So you use it for all of these different things. I say all that to say is that when you migrate to the cloud, once you jump over that fence, each one of these there's a different product or what Microsoft refers them to workload that will handle this. So what we end up seeing is that these spray out to different workloads when you migrate. Now, again, this may not be your initial migration, but if you're going to do this right, this is what you need to consider. So when you go to intranet, I'm going to just put it up here. This will be your modern SharePoint. And when you go for project manage it, management, I'll put this up here again. This is going to be Microsoft Teams, right? Or, you know, Planner inside of Teams. Or it could be Azure DevOps, right? But usually that collaboration, because it's very similar to internal collaboration, meaning that you're pitching and you're catching with a subset of team members. Anyone outside that team don't have access to the documents. They don't have access to the task list. They don't have access to the communications that happen. Microsoft Teams is best suited for that scenario. But on-prem, there's a subsite carved out for that activity. So for business applications, that's going to carve out to the Power Platform, right? Now, you could technically, right? There's nothing that's going to stop you. Again, this will shoot, you, shoot, shoot yourself in the foot because basically you're setting yourself up to do the work twice. You can move from InfoPath to InfoPath in the cloud. You could move from SharePoint designer workflows on-prem to SharePoint designer workflows in the cloud in classic SharePoint. But you setting yourself up to touch it again. The right way to do it or the end goal is to get all those InfoPath forms migrated to Power Apps. All of those workflows, either third party or designer workflows, migrate to Power Automate, right? And everything in between. And of course, if you have integration for line of business apps and stuff like that, you're going to have to look at the something to a little, little bit more stronger with um, um, logic apps or custom APIs or some type of gateway that allow you to have a cloud instance or a cloud app make calls to your on-prem database or whatever the case may be. So internal collaboration, that's going to grow to Microsoft Teams, right? These are built and Teams is, you know, understand Teams. I mean, don't, don't believe the marketing hype. Understand the anatomy of Teams. Understand that the security that, that's powering Teams and how that ties into your Azure AD groups and they give them fancy names of Microsoft 365 groups. Uh, understand that your documents that you're using, that you're interacting with Teams is actually behind the scenes stored in a SharePoint document library 
every time you spin up a team's team, right? And there's some terminology, there's some jargon you have to, you know, wrap your head around to, but you're going to have this concept of a team. And then under the team, you're going to have channels. Don't treat those as folders, like a folder hierarchy, really treat them as containers. And that's kind of hard to explain, but treat, you know, here's a better one. Treat them as site collections and subsites. So if you spin up a new channel, the same reasoning or the same vetting process you use to justify a new subsite within the site collection, use that same vetting process to define or to confirm why you need a new channel. It could be security, it could be access, it could be, um, you know, you're dealing with an app that's huge and you want to break the, ch the different modules of the app into channels. So there's a judgment there. You're going to get it wrong. We all got it wrong our first round, our second round, our third round. But what we did was go back and retrospect and look what worked when we decided this team channel structure versus one that was you know more exposed or more verbose versus one that was more consolidated. And you're going to float between them, right? You're going to see the friction points with sharing documents. Here's another one, interacting with clients outside of the organization, clients, vendors, suppliers. Uh, but it has all of that. So for your internal collaboration, Microsoft Teams is going to have that. And for your document management, it's still going to be SharePoint. So and I would still say SharePoint Modern for this one. Now, the good news when it comes to lists in libraries, uh, regardless if your site is classic site definition or modern site definition, when it comes to your lists and libraries, you have the option of going classic or modern. You're going to get more features and capabilities on the modern side. It's just going to have the UI is just going to be more rich. It's going to be a learning curve. You're going to knock it because you're used to the classic way of doing things with on-prem. You're going to knock it because it's new. But at the end of the day, for your end users, managing security is a lot richer. The views and management, view management, creating views, you know, bouncing between views is going to be more um, easier. The UX is a lot better. Um, when it comes to the biggest one, the 5,000 you know, item threshold limit, which is not soft limit, right? It's not a hard limit. We understand that you can store millions of items in the SharePoint list. You can store millions of documents in the single document library. You don't need folders to chop them up in order to get performance. Now, the issue is the view, the rendering of that, and I can go video of the video of the video on how to configure your list and library to support millions of items and millions of documents. I see so many architects, I see so many SharePoint admins or SharePoint owners, site owners, try to design their way around the 5,000 limit and create this horizontal sprawl of the same data being, you know, chopped up into many different containers because they fear of the threshold limit. Modern UI handles that a lot better than the classic. And it shows you that it is possible once you configure and tune your list for large data models. So what does that mean? Understanding that you go from this consolidated all in one scenario to when you deploy this or migrate, you have a very wide fanned out scenario. What exactly does that mean? These are the items that you should get tuned up with as far as technology and skill. Understand modern SharePoint and how it's different. Yeah, you're going to be familiar with a lot of the terminology, a lot of the containers. There's, a, you know, the same concept of sites and lists and libraries and site settings and list settings and so on and so forth. The security is still there. The security gets kind of interesting once you do this thing called a team site, right? Not Microsoft team. That's a team template within SharePoint. Um, the security behind the scenes, you know, you kind of inherit, you kind of get these groups with that. Uh, understand the anatomy of Microsoft Teams. Understand the architecture and the approach of, you know, teams and channels. And within the channel, your your document structure, and then you got your tabs and you have this app framework to where you can bring in other third-party apps within that workspace. Understand the difference between Microsoft Teams 
use case scenarios and SharePoint use case scenarios, right? Um, when would you use what, you know, when to use what, when? I think there was a, there's actually, I forget his name, but he did a really, really good article on that because there's, that's the piece, right? Because when you go out here, if you look at my whiteboard here and I hit this app launcher, and if I hit Microsoft 365, where it's going to show me hopefully all of the apps. No, it just took me to the home page. I always get this wrong. So if I hit this app launcher, explore your apps, right? These are all the apps you have access to depending on your subscription level. Right? And some of them are just client centric apps, meaning like Word, Excel, Visio, so on the whiteboard. Some of these are enterprise apps. Uh, these are these are actually the apps that I created, and that's this is actually new to me. So we're seeing this, we're both seeing this at the same time. But these are apps that I created using Power Apps, and it's pretty cool that you you kind of get them this front billing be, because again, some of the business apps that we create in Power Apps probably have the same weight, if not heavier, than some of these out of the box. So making these available at the forefront of your user group is very, very nice. Um, and again, these are your other general apps that you have. But with your subscription, this is everything that you have access to out of the box. And understanding when to use a list, right, in this form versus the SharePoint list versus an Excel file versus an access database, which no one should be using access anymore. Um, you know, when does one, where are the use cases do you use one over the other, right? Um, even when forms, so you got this thing with forms, and then you got Power Apps that has three or four different application types, Canvas apps, model-driven apps, SharePoint, custom SharePoint list apps, forms, and then you got this Microsoft Forms. All of those have different use cases and scenarios of why you would use that over the other, right? So you got Power Apps, you got Power Automate. I think these are pretty, you know, kind of well-defined, especially Power Automate. Um, Power BI, the new reporting. You may have some old SSRS items that need to be migrated. You may have some third party like Tableau or, you know, some other self-service reporting tool on Prem that may need to be migrated. And that's the other thing, and we didn't talk about that in the whiteboard, is that to supplement SharePoint on Prem, you had a bunch of third party scenarios that you had to overcome that were introduced to the organization to supplement or complement some of the things that SharePoint just couldn't do and the third party did better, right? And when you migrate these, how many of these are you going to keep? Or if you have integration between this third party solution and SharePoint, how do you maintain that integration? Oops, that's probably not a good line. How do you maintain that integration with SharePoint Online, right? Or do you need to maintain it? And maybe phase one you do because you don't want to try to boil the ocean in your initial migration because that would just confuse everyone in the organization and no one would have a handle on what's happening. So breaking this up in phase approach may make sense, right? You know, um, but this third party integration, maybe you do this online, you have to figure it out, right? Because you got to jump over the on-prem cloud line. So how do you jump over that safely without punching too many holes in your firewall and exposing your back back office? And what is the phase approach? Are we going to do this as a temporary solution, understanding that if I have a third-party reporting tool, that's going to go to Power BI uh, sometime in the future, right? And then you get trained up. Let's talk about training and how you learn. The new professional or the new way of learning, the new way of get, grabbing and understanding and mastering the skill is all self-taught. To me, I think it's coaching programs. I think it's YouTube. I think it's online training. Because if you wait for this to get printed in the book, by the time the ink dries, it's out of it's out of season. 
is expired. It's no longer relevant, right? You, and you see that with my YouTube videos. On my YouTube videos, I have to go back and update 20 or 30% of all my videos because it's not relevant anymore. It's not relevant anymore. The way my, my screen of just creating these SharePoint sites are no longer relevant. So if you look at uh, some of the sites that I have out here, for example, even let's go to, and this, this is not Tesla. This is just me being a fanboy of Tesla. So let me put that out there. But when my initial modern SharePoint stuff, like we didn't have the mega menu. We actually only had one column to create this whole page. Now we have different columns to create this, right? So again, you know, for, for my folks that are deep in SharePoint, the whole publishing concept, the whole master page and page layout, that's not a thing in modern SharePoint. You have inline layouts, you have inline formatting, right? So when I go here and edit this page, if I want a three column layout, I just come in here, add a new section that gives me three columns. These are gonna be my web part zones and I just drop my web parts in there. There's no need for a predefined page layout and you're setting up configuration on which users or which sites can use that layout and which sites couldn't use that layout and which layout were only dedicated for certain sites and all that jazz. Like none of that is part of modern SharePoint. That's why it's super important. You spend your time on YouTube, you spend your time on LinkedIn learning, you spend your time on Microsoft Learn, like wherever you have to go to get skilled up, that's what you that's the new way of learning. That's the new way of working. It's your responsibility to get skilled up in these items. It's not your organization's responsibility, right? Because you don't have to pay for it. Like all the train, I would say 90% of the training you need is free and it's already available. You just have to go out there and find it and consume it and set up your schedules and the discipline to absorb it. Don't get left behind. That was one of the biggest mistakes I made back in 07, 08. I built my consulting career around content management server, which was like a pre, it was a pre-product to SharePoint 2007, right? Because prior to SharePoint 2007, it was just portal technology. They didn't have a really good way to manage content, like manage pages and build internet and build this, this whole site structure with navigation and pages and so on and so forth. So in 07, they introduced that web content management, right? And that's where most of the organizations were going. Well, I was on a very lucrative project for over three years, had my head dug into the sand and not realizing what was happening around me. And that's my biggest fear with some of you guys out there now. You're in this org that's doing these, these little incremental updates with SharePoint on-prem, really, I want to say keeping you pacified because I don't know if you're – career and your technology stack and your desires on where you want to go as an individual is their number one priority. So they're doing the things that's best for the organization that they think is best for the organization. They can absolutely move faster in the cloud. There's no, there's, I don't, I can't think of one scenario to where you can't move faster once you're in the cloud. Modern SharePoint, right? Microsoft Teams, you can spin these up like that. You don't have to worry about provisioning. The disk, the storage, and all that stuff is all on Microsoft. Your environment is optimized to the T on how the product is built, is meant to be used, right? And you just go. You focus on the business. The admin stuff is more of getting your users and your site owners and your content managers compliant with your standards that you build around these tools um, that are in the cloud. It's not infrastructure. Right. It's not server. It's not disk space. It's not upgrades. It's not whatever, whatever. And here's the other thing. You will always have access. Depending on your subscription level, you will always have access to the latest technology. Once you're out here, you never have to upgrade. And that was one of the things a lot of the IT admins and architects and technical directors had a hard time wrapping their head around because they want to control that. Well, what if our users get confused because they go out there tomorrow and you know, this button has moved over here. 
It's the new way of working. That's almost saying like, I don't want to get, you know, so-and-so a smartphone because, you know, they may have a new app or now they have to use apps to get certain things done. That's already has been the way of working. We're just now taking what we do on our personal side of life into the business side of life. And for whatever reason, some of the leadership just believe that that's not possible. So on this Independence Day, uh, or eve of the independence, it's time to get selfish. Don't get left behind. Don't get caught up like I did because it took like I was able to claw out. But financially, it crushed me. I didn't get to the point where I had like lost my house. I was going to lose my house and stuff like that. But it came very close to that. And let, let me just show you what it looked like. So I was always as a consultant traveling. So I was always home on the weekends. Work from home wasn't a big thing, you know, back in 08 and whatever. You had to be a special somebody to be able to work remotely, especially as a consultant. Like consultant, like if they're paying you that hourly rate, they want you there. They want to make sure you're getting things done. They want to, And they want to make sure you were super efficient, right, because they wanted to get as much done in that time frame as, as and you should be faster than anyone else on the team. You're a consultant. That's what you were meant to do. But um, I say all that to say I traveled a lot. I was only home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, always on the plane Monday morning, went straight to the office because that's how I can cut down uh, or, or widen or hedge my time at home because I was able to, to be home Sunday night and then just away um, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Yep. And then I would come home Friday afternoon. Um, or I would come home Friday night. I can't remember exactly how it worked. But when, as a consultant, I didn't have the skill set. No one was hiring content management consultants. Everyone was hiring SharePoint consultants at that time. So I had to find a way to get skilled up. And I found this one company that was three hours away from my home um, that would take a chance on me. And that's, that's the one I went with. And it was a scenario where I had to, I had, it was a heavy consideration of uprooting my family from my hometown to move three hours away and sell our home or in that scenario, walk away from our home uh, because it was like the, the housing crisis and no one was going to give us what we needed for it. Um, and just, you know, just really change our, our life because I lost track of what was happening in the world, in the industry, in my technology space. And that's what's happening now. We're far, we're light years away from SharePoint on Prem. Light years, light years. If you're with an organization that's centered around it, that organization is gonna have to make some very serious changes in the near future. Because with AI, it just got worse. And that was the whole point of this conversation is that once you, once you mix in, one, moving to the cloud was a disruptor. Low-code, no-code solutions like the Power Platform is the next disruptor, right? If you're a skilled developer, there is no reason um, to hire you. There is no reason to hire you to do those business applications that you did in InfoPath and SharePoint Designer and so on and so forth. They can hire someone that never code that's te that gets tech and drag and drop. Like some of these business analysts can start building their own solutions. They really don't need the skills that you have, right? And do you look at SPFX skills? No. Custom web parts is not the thing. It's not, it's not the, the heavy demand that we were used to with SharePoint on prem. The reason why is because out of the box, Share, modern SharePoint is feature rich. There's a lot of just configure me web parts that can get the job done. And it looks light years better than what we spent quarter million on with a custom UI, 
custom dev, you know, figuring out, you know, using SharePoint as a data source and using custom dev as a nice slick UI, um, making it responsive, you know, very heavy master pages, page layouts, you know, JavaScript for those of us who were able to cut our teeth and learn JavaScript versus server side coding, so on and so forth. The world is way different. None of that's required to get an intranet off the ground. And we can come in and build intranets zero to 100 in less than three weeks, fully functional, ready to go. Because the reason being is that 20% of that is heavy dev. And it's not really heavy dev, it's heavy configuration. It's heavy configuration. Yeah, there's going to be some gaps. Yeah, there's going to be certain use cases that we can't do out of the box. And we're going to try to, you know, beat those down with power apps. And if we can't do it with power apps, then, then we're going to cut our teeth for custom dev. So custom dev is not 90% of the scenario as it was in SharePoint Online. It's probably less than 5% of the scenario in, I'm sorry, 90% SharePoint on-prem, 5% with SharePoint Online, with modern SharePoint, right? So that's the end of my rant. But yeah, it's, you know, so that scenario, sorry, I'm all over the place because I'm trying to get as much out of me into this video as possible because I know someone is sitting on the fence. I know someone is going, looking at their day-to-day -day, and noticing that everything that Microsoft talks about in Microsoft Build or the SharePoint conference or the Microsoft conference, SharePoint on Prem is probably not mentioned or, or, or it's an at mention, it's a hardly ever mentioned, right? And that skill that, it, you know, you, you just gotta be ready to jump. You gotta be ready to jump. And here's the other good thing. If you go out here and get skilled up now, when your organization move to the cloud, you have a head start on everybody else. You become the subject matter expert, right? Because you can go out there and start putting, and don't tell them what you know, show them what you know. Start building different, oh, our internet is this and this and this, but my SharePoint, our internet could look like this. Show them. Because everyone's going to be saying they can, they can, they can. Because everyone's going to be regurgitating YouTube videos or podcasts and things like they heard. And just start spitting out ter terms and, and knowledge. Not terms and knowledge, but jargon, right? Terms and jargon. And from an executive, it all sounds the same. But if you can show them, they can't touch you with that. So, yeah, be, be prepared. Go out there and start showing them. You know your business more than, than anyone else. You know your business and any consulting that comes in the door, right? So you have the business knowledge and the history, and now you're going to have the modern tech capability. Fuse them together, and you will be the unstoppable force. Like, that will actually set you up for promotion. You will leapfrog over everyone else in your department. So if you're in this scenario, the Number one thing you can do now on this Independence Day is to get independent, start your own learning, explore this new technology, and get ready for the future. Because the future is already is happening now. So you, you have some catching up to do, but now is the time. Hopefully this was helpful. Talk to you tomorrow.